Good morning everyone. Welcome to our online worship uh, for Sunday the 14th of February. Um, I'm sure I can't have escaped your notice as Valentine's Day today so uh, I hope some of you perhaps have got a little treat uh, this morning perhaps in bed. Um, if you have, uh, enjoy that. Uh, so welcome to our worship there, whether you're from Banbridge, Black Skull or Donnacloney congregation or you're a visitor on our Facebook page, you're especially welcome. Uh, I'm very thankful today that Mr Andrew Topley uh, is going to uh, take our service for us today. Uh, I think most of our own congregations know by now that Andrew is a candidate for our ordained ministry and is uh, presently going through the different uh, processes involved with that. So please continue to remember him uh, and Melanie in your prayers as well. The announcements have been rolling on the screen just as we have uh, gathered there. Uh, just let me draw your attention to one there. We're not going to have a time of fellowship of tea and coffee uh, after the service this morning. But we're going to meet on Tuesday evening at half past seven. Um, again, I'm sure it hasn't escaped your notice that Tuesday coming is Pancake Tuesday. Um, and um, so we're going to meet together over Zoom at half past seven there just with a cup of tea and hopefully a few pancakes. And if any of our younger viewers want to come on and show uh, their maybe pancake flipping skills, that, that would be great um, as well. So that's Tuesday evening at half past past seven and again we'll issue the zoom details on the whatsapp group the rest of the announcements have uh, been rolling and uh, as i say andrew's taken our service this morning so uh, i'm very pleased to be able to hand over to him i know that you'll be blessed thanks well good morning everyone and welcome to our sunday morning service can i just say a big thank you to the reverend andrew gibson for his warm welcome and for him allowing us to be a, a part of this today. You know, we're here to worship the King of Kings. We're here to meet with God this morning. So let's do that as we, we open with our call to worship. It's, we're going to read a wee bit of Psalm 66 this morning. Just five verses. But listen to these words from the psalmist. Shout for joy. To God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God. How awesome are your deeds. So great is your power. That your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come, come and see what God has done. His awesome deeds for all mankind. Wow, what a great way to start our service today by listening to such great words 
of our Saviour. We're going to sing now. I'm going to hand you over to Melanie. Melanie's going to sing a, a brilliant song to open our service today. Oh, praise the name. The words are going to be up on the screen. So please, at home, sing along. Let us join together in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. 
Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. So come, Holy Spirit, come. Gracious and loving God, creator, sustainer and provider of all things, we come together this morning to praise your name. You and you alone are worthy of such praise. Father, although we may be apart today, we're together in praising your holy name. You are, Lord, who you say you are. You are the great I am. And Father, we come today bursting with joy and thanksgiving and thankfulness for all that you have done for us. Father, even this week, we have been blessed with so, so many gifts. So many gifts, Lord, that, that we maybe even take them for granted at times. Lord, we thank you for our health and our strength, for the air that we breathe, for the clean water, Lord, that we drink, for the food that we have to eat and the clothes we have on our backs. Lord, we thank you that, that we are in, in a loving family, that we have the warmth of, of a house and the love of people around us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us our church family and people that, that pray for us and uphold us and even keep us accountable. But Father, none of this would happen without you. Without you, Lord. But Lord, we have to admit this morning that we are a sinful people. Father, we let you down time and time again. Lord, we think of things that we say or do or... And, and Lord, it's, it's bad, it's wrong. And we let you down. And Lord, for that we are sorry. For that we thank you for forgiveness. We thank you for that cleansing power and the blood of the name of Jesus. That casts away all of our sins. Lord, as we move on today in our service. Lord, this service today is nothing without you. Without the Holy Spirit's presence. So where we sit today, Lord, in our homes. Where we, where we be, Lord, to watch this recording today. Would you be also? Would you come and anoint us afresh today, Lord, with the power of the Holy Spirit? And would you cleanse us afresh this morning, Lord? So that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Father God, we ask all of these things humbly in the precious name of your son, Jesus, who taught us, Lord, his disciples to say together and aloud, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this point in our service you know, we are super, super grateful for the team on mission. And in the last few weeks, you would have watched different videos that the Reverend Andrew Gibson would have used from the team of mission. In fact, last week, Rebecca, I did a craft with you all. Well, today, Lauren Connolly is going to follow on from that as she brings us a message today on service. So boys and girls, adults, enjoy. Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk to you about the spiritual discipline of serving and different ways that you can serve others. But first, what does it mean to serve others? The word serve can mean to offer food, to help, to spend time, to work, to give honour and to be obedient. I wonder, can you think of any ways that you might serve others? 
This could be by helping someone with a task that they have to do, or even by baking cookies for someone that might be sad. Serving is not only serving people, but also serving God. And we can do this by serving others. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7, it says, Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. This means that we should serve others as if it were God himself we were serving. We should always do our best when we are serving or helping others, because by doing this, we are showing them God's love and therefore serving God. We can use the craft from Rebecca's video to help us find ways we can serve others. But another way that is really good to help to find ways of helping and serving others is by asking the question, how can I help? You could ask your parent or guardian at home, how can you help with cooking dinner? Or ask them, how can I help with the chores around the house? You could even sit down with your guardian or parent and ask, is there any way I can help the people around me? And you can think of ways with them to help people around you in your community and show them God's love. I want to challenge you guys this week and in the coming weeks to try and serve and help more people than you might already do. So this could be using Rebecca's craft to find the ways of which you're going to help serve people or by asking, how can I help? And doing whatever task you're given to the best of your ability to serve them and serve God by showing them God's love. Again, can I just take this opportunity to thank uh, the team of mission, to thank Lauren for bringing us such a, a great challenge this morning. Your work is fantastic and we, we applaud you, we commend you. And we pray for you as you move on to finish off the rest of your year together. Let's just do that. Let's just take time to pray for others as we think of service. And with service, we think of sacrifice. So let's pray for others. Father God, we want to start by praying for the team and mission. Father God, we thank you for their servant hearts we thank you for the sacrifice, Lord, that they are making this year to serve you, to bring joy, Lord, to our young people and to our elder people as well. But, Lord, the sacrifice that they're making on a daily basis to grow and to get to know you in a better way. Father, we pray that you would bless them in a mighty, mighty way, that you would open such doors for them, that they would have great opportunity this year, Lord, to reach the lost, and to advance the kingdom. So Lord, we thank you for them and we pray for them. Father, we want to pray for, for those that are sick today. Oh, Father, we think of this, this pandemic that we're in. We think of so many families, Lord, that has been devastated with this illness, with this disease. Father God, we pray for them today. Oh, Father, we pray that as their hearts break today, Lord, that you would surround them with your love, that you would draw close to them and provide other people that would draw close to them to support them and to, to help them to get back on their feet again. Father, for those that are ill in our hospitals today, Lord, we ask that you would be with the doctors, the nurses, that you would be with them to give them the insight and the wisdom, Lord, that they know to tackle this illness. Lord, would you strengthen those that lie in our hospital beds? Lord, we think of the nurses and doctors and the, and the rest of our NHS and our care workers and our frontline services, Lord. We just pray that you would continue to strengthen them. Oh, Lord, this has been going on almost a year now where most of them are running on empty. Most of them have gone the extra mile. And Lord, they have sacrificed so much so that we can have what we have. And again, Lord, we thank you for them. But Lord, we ask that you would be with them, that you would draw close to them. And Lord, that they would even know this morning that we are praying for them. Father, are we a bit closer to home, I guess. I, I, I have a burden, Lord, today for the unsteadiness in Northern Ireland. There seems to be a rumbling, Lord, uh, I suppose in the, in the loyalist community at the minute too, Lord, with all this about the, the, the border and the Irish Sea border, Father, I pray that it would not turn to violence, that you would intervene. 
but that our politicians, Lord, that, that sit in government, would learn to, to rule us in an equal way. That they would learn to think of everybody on this island of Ireland. And that, Lord, we could return again to peace and some sort of normality. Lord, I don't have the answers. But you do. Would you provide wisdom where it's needed? Would you bring understanding where it's needed? And would you fill us with your love this morning? Father, as we move on in our service, we ask that the Holy Spirit would continue to talk to us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. At this point, I'm going to hand back over to Melanie as she sings a, another beautiful hymn to us this morning. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. Again, the words will be on the screen, so enjoy.
going to turn to the Word of God. If you have a Bible at home, uh, you might want to turn to the Gospel according to John. We're going to be delving into chapter 12 today. We're going to be starting at verse 1 and reading through to verse 8. It's a well-known story of a woman anointing Jesus with her perfume. So that's the Gospel according to John. That's John chapter 12 and it's verses 1 to 8. I'm reading from the New International Version this morning. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honour. Martha served, while Lazarus was one among them reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it out on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she would save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. We end the reading at number at verse 8, and we, we pray that God really blesses the reading of his word today. Let's just quickly pray before we, we get back into the word of God. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Father, as we turn to your word this morning, I pray that you would, would really open up the, the, the scripture today to those that are listening. That you would touch right deep inside, Lord, today. So that today would not be like any other day where we sit and we listen and we think, what a great sermon. But it ultimately doesn't change the way we are or who we are. Would today be different? Would today be a day where we get transformed or we get convicted to do things in a different way? Lord, as we are leaving today, I pray that you and you alone get all the honour and all the glory and all the praise that you deserve. Lord, may the words that come out of me be all of you and none of me. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to be looking today at, at John chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. And it's about breaking your alabaster jar. Now it's important to point out that, that this story, or a similar account of this story, is recorded in all four of the Gospels. But with some differences. In the Gospels, according to Matthew and Mark, we read that this event happened just before the Last Supper. And that Jesus' head was anointed with oil. However, in the Gospel, according to Luke and John, they record that it was Jesus' feet that were anointed with oil and not his head. John's Gospel places the timing of this event just before that triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem on the donkey. Where you, you remember the story where Jesus was cheered, he was applauded and he was celebrated by the very people who will be shouting for him today in just a week. Although the main purpose of the gospel writers was to give an accurate record of Jesus' message and not to present an exact chronological account of his life, it's widely thought that John's account 
places this event in the most likely chronological order. And that is why I have chose to read from the book of John today. So enough of that. Let's, let's get into the story. We read in verse 1 that six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany. Lazarus, who was dead, whom he had raised from the dead. Now that got me thinking that there must be various reasons to why Jesus, knowing, knowing that in just a short time that he was going to be put to death, why would he still choose to make such this kind of visit to see his friends at Bethany? With the Passover celebrations only six days away, was Jesus preparing himself to fulfill all righteousness? You see, devout men would set time apart to prepare for the Passover. So was Jesus in preparation. Let us hear the voice crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Or was Jesus voluntarily offering himself to his enemies? Now I use that word voluntarily because we have seen in the Gospels that Jesus had proven on many occasions that he could evade their capture. But now, now that his hour was at hand, had he come within their reach to sacrifice himself? If we go to verse 2 in the story, it gives us another clue for his visit. There they had made him supper. And Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Wow. Jesus was spending time with his friends that he loved greatly. He was sharing a meal with people whom that he would shortly be taken away from. I want to say this morning that this was his farewell visit. Jesus had come to comfort his friends and to say his good days. I don't know about you this morning, but what an amazing glimpse into the heart of Jesus. What an amazing glimpse into a heart filled with love and compassion for his friends. When we move on in our story, we are then introduced to Mary, the sister of Lazarus in verse 3. Our first encounter of Mary was during a visit that Jesus had made to her home, where she just sat simply at his feet and listened as he spoke. I'm sure you remember the story that her sister Martha was complaining because she was doing all the work. She was doing all the cooking. And she become irritated at the fact that Mary wasn't helping. Well, where do we find Mary again in this story? Right at the feet of Jesus. Right at the feet of Jesus. But this time, this time Mary has took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard. Now, spikenard was a fragrant ointment imported from the mountains of India. So it was very, very rare and very expensive. Judas said it was like a year's salary. She then wipes Jesus' feet with her hair and the aroma fills the room. Plain and simple. This was Mary's most precious possession and she's poured out every last drop now maybe witnessing the death and the resurrection of her brother Lazarus had weaned her off all such luxuries even so Mary had chosen to sacrifice Mary had chosen to neglect herself and give everything that she had to Jesus. 
Are you willing to do that today? Are you willing to sacrifice everything that you have today for Jesus? The clergyman Edward Everett Hale says these words. I am only one, but still I am one. I can't do everything, but still I can do something. And because I can't do everything, I will not refuse to do the something that I can do. Mary chose to do what she could do. Will we? And you know what a contrast then we read in verses 4 and 5 of Mary's selfless act and that of Judas Iscariot. Judas, you remember, a disciple of Jesus. He wanted to know why this very expensive jar of oil was not sold for the, the 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. Now at first glance, at first glance you may think that's a very noble and a very right thing to say. And it was only for Judas' intentions not being right. You see, it would, it would appear that Judas was concerned for the well-being of the needy and the poor. But unfortunately, Judas was using this pious phrase to hide his true selfish motives. Verse 6, not that he cared for the poor because he was a thief and had the money bag that he frequently dipped into for his own personal use. However, Jesus knew his heart. Judas' lie, sorry, Judas' life had become a lie. And the devil was starting to gain more and more control of him. Jesus responds to him in verse 7 and verse 8. Leave her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you will always have. But me you don't have always. Now listen, I want you to grasp this this morning. Jesus isn't teaching here to neglect the poor or to neglect the lonely or the needy that's in our society and to spend all of your money on him. That's not what he's saying. This was a unique and special occasion that Mary had anointed Jesus' feet in anticipation of his upcoming death. This was a declaration of faith in Jesus as the Messiah. Unfortunately, we know the story for Judas he didn't take heed. Soon he would go on to sell Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. However, our last glimpse of Mary shows her to have become a woman of thoughtful and worshipful action. You know, breaking that jar was her way of breaking with her past. No more Masking the stench of sin with the sweet scent of perfume. No more secrets. No more shame. No more regrets. You see, Mary seemed to understand, even better than the disciples, why Jesus was going to die. And she wasn't going to let anything stop her from serving God or getting to know him personally. You know, Matthew 26 and 13, Jesus said these words, Her act of worship would be told everywhere, along with the gospel, as an example of costly sacrifice and costly service. Wow, what a legacy 
to leave behind. In conclusion this morning, I want to, to remind you of the great John Wesley. Now, you may have heard the story, but John Wesley, during his lifetime, is reported to have given away approximately £30,000. Adjusted for inflation in today's market or today's society, you're looking at somewhere like £1.35 million. Pounds. Why? You see, Wesley had made a covenant with God in 1731 to limit his income to just £28 a year. He never had any more than £100 in his possession because he was afraid of storing up earthly treasure. Now, I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't pay your bills. I'm not suggesting that you're not to take care of your family and you aren't even to plan for the future. But if God prompted you this morning to give away all that you had, would you be willing to break your alabaster jar and pour it out at his feet? You see, John Wesley, just like Mary, may have died with just a few coins in their pockets. But they will have a storehouse of treasure when they get to heaven. Let me leave you this morning with a question. What kind of hospitality? What type of sacrifice does God receive from your life? And may I humbly, humbly suggest that you have to really think about your answer? Well, then it's maybe time that you broke open your alabaster jar and poured it at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Can we just spend a little time to reflect on what we've just heard? And whilst you're doing that, Melanie is going to sing a solo for us, a beautiful, beautiful song, which is all about what we've just heard. It's called Broken and Spilled Out. Could I encourage you just to, to close your eyes where you are, to ask the Holy Spirit to minister to the parts of your life or your heart where you need him. And just ask God to move in a powerful way.
As we, we close today, again I just want to thank you for taking the time to listen to us today. Let's just close together with our benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us today and forevermore. Amen. Using celebration, breaking into freedom. You're the soul, you're the soul of our hearts. We cast aside our shadows, trust you with our sorrows. You're the soul, you're the soul of our hearts. Dancing to the rhythm of your heart We're rising from the ashes to the stars